middle child. Any middle children here? All right, all right. Who cares? Right? Whole life is just one big who cares. You have two years, maybe, for you're the baby of the family. The world is yours. And then one day your parents just look at you and they just say, you are not enough. <laughs> Let's get a girl. That's what happened to my family anyway. Heather. <laughs> I love the dogs that are just kind of roaming around. It reminds me of the time I was in Mexico on a mission trip actually. And uh, there are just dogs everywhere. I mean, these dogs are eating dirty diapers. It's nice. Uh, true story, true story. But uh, being a middle child, though, is an experience. Uh, you really, you learn how to just kind of detach and do things on your own, right? I realized that I put off a pretty strong middle child energy uh, just, a, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I was at an open mic, and the, one of the comics, he uh, looked at me, and he said, Hey, man, do you smoke weed? And I don't. I never have, actually. I, I am the dare success story. Like, that's me. <laughs> Officer Mike came in, and he brought his dog and his pictures of drugs, and I go so terrible. And I said, pass on grass every time. And, uh, but anyway, this guy, like, hey, do you smoke weed? And I was like, no. And then I realized, at 42 years old, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me even if I smoke weed. I don't even know if he was inviting me to smoke weed. He just said, do you. Like he's doing a survey for the state of Washington. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I don't smoke weed. I don't do any drugs because, you know, family. Um, but yeah, that, you know, that, that was part of my middle child energy. Just, yeah, don't invite that guy. He's a middle kid. We don't want to get that stink on us. I mean, my wife and I were both middle children. Somehow we found each other. And we were like, you like doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. Yeah, that's great. We're middle kids. Do your own thing. And uh, we decided to stop after two children because we didn't want to have a third, a middle child in this whole mix. Can you imagine raising one of those trolls? Oh. When I was a kid, though, I, uh, I was afraid of, of everything. Uh, it was, I grew up in the previous century, the 1980s is when I was born. And uh, yeah, good years, yeah. It was good times. I don't remember a lot of it because I, I, mean, I was born in 81, uh, so. But uh, I was just, it was a time when we were afraid of everything. And uh, I, I was outside playing by myself as a, because I was a middle child. And. Um, <laughs> True story, this is more middle child energy. This this guy pulled up in a white van, rolled his window down manually. This is the 80s. He said, Hey kid, can you help me find my puppy? I was like, That seems like a lot of work, man. Better care of your dog. <laughs> it just drove off. It was just a little while ago. I was reflecting on my life, and I was like, that guy, that guy was trying to kidnap me. <laughs> but the life skills I learned of being a middle child of apathy and detachment saved my life. It's amazing. I, uh, I'm a dad. Any dads here? All right. Yes. Yes. Being a dad is rewarding is something that I have heard. <laughs> I, I have two teenage children and I love them so much. They're the best. Uh, but I'm still waiting for my son's Father's Day card. <laughs> Father's Day is a scam though, because how many other holidays does the person being honored have to remind people that it's coming up? <laughs> hey, you know, the third Sunday in June is coming up. That's when Father's Day is, by the way. <laughs> it's always the third Sunday of June, all right? You don't see Jesus going around in December going, Psst, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, you may be surprised to hear this, but this is actually not my full-time job. 
I'm, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. Thank you. Thank you. I know who I'll be praying for. Uh, but in my church, they, they know I do comedy, and sometimes it gets weird because I'll be meeting with a couple, and like they'll be like, hey, this is going to end up in the act, is it? And I'm like, oh, that's the narcissism she was talking about. Okay, all right. Got it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am a dad. I love being a dad. I have two teenage kids. Uh, my daughter, I, 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 I skipped a thing. I'm going to go back to a thing, and I'll come back around. Does that sound good? Uh, you're my you're my guy. You're my support audience. Thank you. Uh, but my daughter got me a Father's Day card, and uh, it was really sweet. I uh, opened it up and said, "Dad." So we're on the right page. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for being my free Uber driver. Three point five stars. <laughs> Music sucks. Talks too much. Needs better snacks. <laughs> the nicest thing she's ever said to me. But I always wanted to be a dad because my dad was awesome. He still is awesome. He's still alive. Uh, and uh, he always made us feel safe. Because, like I said, in the 80s, we were afraid of everything. And I was afraid, as a, like a little kid, as four years old, I was afraid someone was going to break into our house and murder our whole family. Who's ready to laugh? I, uh, I asked my dad one time, I said, Dad, what should I do if somebody tries to break into our house and murder our whole family? He said, this is what you do, Jason. Just lay real still, pull your sheets all the way up to your neck, don't think your head's cut off, don't move on. <laughs> I love you, good night. I was four years old, and that's when I learned that the human head may or may not be detachable. But I, I still sleep that way for safety. So thank you, Dad. Thank you. I, uh, I've been uh, thinking about my fears a lot lately. Maybe else ever think about their fears? You know, like a lot of things I was afraid of as a kid, but now I have like legit fears. Like I'm afraid that my dog's not going to find me interesting one day. <laughs> like one day she'll just, just be like, why am I following you around? <laughs> I'm also afraid that when I die I'm going to bring great shame on my family because they'll look at the search history on my computer and they'll see just how many times I looked up how to spell millennial. <laughs> and like, I write down my set like as I like, uh, things. And even here, I've told this joke a bunch of times. This is still wrong. I know it's wrong. I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know how to make it right. <laughs> I'm afraid that's, that's gonna, Bring shame on my family. <laughs> was that Costco a couple weeks ago? Anybody like Costco? Yeah. I, knew the, I knew the pandemic was going to get better. Like we're getting, in, getting back to health when the Costco samples came back out. Because all of a sudden you got all the mouth breathers just waiting for that little corner of a hot pocket. <laughs> I, I was like, we're going to make it guys. Be all right. But I was at Costco and I saw something kind of freaky. There were there were two ambulances by the entrance to Costco, which was like, what could possibly be going on that there would be two ambulances at Costco? But then I remember that everything comes in bulk at Costco. So, that was, that was awesome. um, I, uh, I, I am married. Woo! My, wife, my wife is my best friend, my Aww. North Star. She's great, I love her. Uh, her name's Kathy. And she doesn't usually come to see me do comedy. Um, for a lot of reasons. One, though, is she's pretty sure she's going to outlive me. And uh, she only wants to watch me die the one time. So. She probably will not let me um, because her her family's got good genes, and it, it's good if she outlives me. Because the last time I asked somebody out on a date, it was to homecoming, and like I don't even know. Like, are we still like getting limos for first dates? Like, I don't. Is that where we're at? I don't. I don't. I don't know. 
So I can't, I can't outlive her. Like, I, I got no game. Zero, zero game. And you're all looking at me like, we knew that. My guy. Uh, what's your name? Suresh? Thank you. You're a good sport, Suresh. Uh, but uh, yeah, my wife and I, we were recently at uh, her grandpa's wedding. Because the reason I got remarried. Uh, he's 92. Can't see, can't hear, but he can still pull. And, uh, yeah, so he recently got remarried, and that led us to having a conversation, like what's going to happen if one of us dies first, right? Because one of us will die first. And, uh, and so this is like a Jeremy Renner in the Hurt Locker situation, right, gentlemen? This is like, there are, you've seen some stuff. There, one, one, one wrong wire, this blows up in your face. And so, because I'm the leader of the house, I said, well, Kathy, well, well, uh, well, uh, what do you want to do? Because I'm the leader. And she said, well, Jason, if, uh, if I die first, I don't think I want you to remarry. And I'm like, that sounds like pretty intense, right? But that also gave me the whole parameters of the conversation. I knew how to move forward now. And so I said, like a champ, well, Kath, if I die first, I just want you to be happy. And she said, thanks. I love you. I love you. Good night. That's all for the way.